Now, one of the great mysteries of neuroscience is the coma. That's when the body is left in a state of unconsciousness for a long period of time. But what has doctors even more perplexed is the vegetative states that can happen when someone comes out of a coma. These patients appear to be awake but don't show any signs of awareness. So how can we really know what is going on in their brains? Well, scientists are now beginning to find out. Patients who have been diagnosed as being in a vegetative state sometimes respond to stimuli. Medicine has defined the condition as awake but unconscious. So doctors often view a patient's reaction to stimulus simply as a reflex. But is that true? What are these patients really experiencing? For over a decade, doctor and psychologist Boris Kotcheby has been working with patients in a vegetative state. He believes there are many stages between unconscious and conscious. As a scientist, he has to keep himself from being misled by the patient's expression, which can be hard to bear at times. We on the outside suffer a lot when we see a patient in a vegetative state. And we often infer that the patient must be suffering too. But they may not perceive their condition in that way. Together with his research team, Kotchubi has examined brain activity in 58 patients in vegetative states. It's the most comprehensive study of its kind to date. These patients have often suffered damage to the cerebral cortex, but does that make it impossible for them to perceive their surroundings? To find out, Kotchubi performed a series of experiments with the help of an MRI scanner. The first test, the researcher asked the patient to perform a task while their brains were being scanned. They were supposed to imagine walking around their home. The results revealed that 12 out of 58 patients were able to at least attempt the task. Then Kotchubi asked the patients to imagine a game of tennis. Not one of them was able to do so. If a patient fails at a mental task, it only means that certain functions of consciousness don't work anymore, but not that the patient is unconscious. But what does that mean? What is consciousness without the ability to imagine or to concentrate? How much do patients understand? Does it make sense to talk with them? The second MRI test contained pre-recorded statements like May comes after April. Some sentences were correct, others weren't. For example, March comes after April. Brain activity in the patients showed whether a patient could tell the difference between true and false. Out of 46 patients tested, eight were able to do so. That means it's highly likely that they also understand when their friends and relatives speak to them. And it certainly means that the nurses and anyone else taking care of the patient should assume that the patient understands them. But what about the patients who are apparently no longer able to understand language? Is it reasonable to stimulate the various senses in other ways? Does the patient feel this stimulus? Is it pleasant or disagreeable? Can someone in a vegetative state feel pain? The third test. This time the researcher played the patient's recordings of people in pain. Ouch! 37 out of 58 patients reacted. Their brain scans revealed that their own pain centers activated when they heard the cries of others. In other words, they were able to feel empathy, the ability to understand and enter into the feelings of others. That shows that this simple consciousness involving pain perception and feelings of suffering isn't just restricted to the patient's inner world. At a very basic level, a form of communication is also taking place. Many patients in a vegetative state are able to perceive the world around them in basic ways. There are signs that some of them feel quite content. But feelings like that are even harder to pin down than perceptions.